Hi everyone, hope you're well. Um, I'm in the workshop today, so just thought I'd give you a quick uh, video to show you um, the Westlock quantum control monitor that we fit into these Norbro actuators. So we've got the Norbro spring return actuator, we've got the Westlock cast uh, safe mount bracket, and then we've got the Westlock quantum control monitor on top. Um, and what makes it the quantum is it's actually got an integral solenoid. So we've got the spool piece on the actual side of the switch box, and we've got the coil inside. The nice thing about that is the coil is actually protected from the elements, from the environment, um, from any mechanical damage, people getting hold of a wire or snagging a wire or something like that. Um, if we need to change the spool, it's very, very quick. We've got two Allen key bolts that we undo. We can take the spool off, we can replace it. We can replace it with a bigger CV if we need to. Um, so it's a really nice solution, this rather than having the solenoid on the side or on the end of the actuator, actuator and then back wiring it into the switch box because all those wires and cables um, can get snagged sometimes when they're on site. So it's a really neat solution. The coil's pre-wired back into the terminal strip. Um, in this version here, we've got the uh, Westlock Magnum XT90 um, proximity switches um, and they've got the touch set cam on the Westlock and we've got the magnet there, which will actually uh, cause the switch to make and unmake. Um, so I just thought I'd show you this one working. Um, we'll put some air on. I've already piped it up. Customers asked for this one in, in nylon piping and fittings. So that's that. So we've got the air on. So we'll push some air in. The coil's not energized, so nothing moves. The solenoid doesn't um, activate or put any air into the actuator. I've pre-wired this into our uh, test box and this is a 24 volt coil. So we've got 24 volts um, on the system here. And what we'll basically do is energize and you'll see that the actuator moved, de-energize and the actuator goes back to the closed position. So in here, we set the top switch for closed. So I've just got the multimeter, as you can see, hopefully on the video, we've got one there. So we go on and I can see that that switch is made because we've got the audible sound and the one disappears off the multimeter. So we take that off, I'm gonna energize, use the touch set cam to move the striker in front of the, um, of the switch. And then I can tell that the open switch is made as well. So quite a nice, neat solution. Just energize and de-energize and you can see that moving, the actuator's moving. And a really nice little thing about um, this particular um, solenoid is we've got this little telltale on the uh, end here. Hopefully you can see it on the video. So when we de-energize, the red dot disappears. And when we energize, you see the red dot. The great thing about that is if we've put 24 volts on and we've got the air on and we energize and we see that red dot, we know everything's working from the cable in from the switch box into the solenoid. If the valve or the actuator doesn't move, we know that it's something below the, uh, below the control part or the control element. We know it's below the switch box. If we energize and we don't see that red dot in there, we know it's either a problem with the solenoid or maybe a problem with the wiring or the connection and possibly not something wrong with the valve. So it's a really nice little fault finding um, element that to the, uh, to the solenoid. So there you have it, the Westlock control monitor. Um, all that's left to do now is to unwire it and put the uh, lid back on with the iconic Westlock beacon so that we can see visually open and closed as well. So just a quick introduction to the Westlock control monitor quantum version with the integrated solenoid. Thanks very much for watching.